Good day. Are you looking to improve on your fitness related to the sandbag lift component of the force test? Well then, this video is for you. My name is Gabriel Quenville and I am the reconditioning specialist for the Canadian Armed Forces out here at Base Bowling Cold Lake. And I'm a clinical exercise physiologist certified through the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology. If you haven't seen my video on the technique component of the sandbag lifts, go ahead and check that out. It is linked in the description below. That is going to be our best way to actually train for the sandbag lift component of the force test. However, if you don't have the sufficient strength to lift that 45 pound bag just yet, or if you don't have the ability to train with sandbags and the lines because you don't have access to the gym or the sandbags, then I'm going to give you some suitable alternatives in this video. The sandbag lift test should be a representation of muscular endurance. We're lifting 45 pounds to one meter high, and we're doing that 30 times in a row. If, let's say, your maximal lift is 45 pounds only, you'll do your first lift and you'll be maxed out. So you want to actually build a sufficient amount of strength so that this is a true representation of muscular endurance. For that to be true, we want your 45 pounds to represent about 33% of your maximal lift or less. That means that your one rep max should be about 135 pounds from floor to one meter or more if you want to succeed and do very well at this test. If you're not there yet, then we need to start working on your strength before we can start working on your muscular endurance. If your one rep max is already well above 135, then you're probably good to go to check out my video on technique and start working on that. If you're still watching this video, then you're looking to work on your strength. In order to do that, I recommend two to three times a week incorporating the deadlift and the squat into a full body strength workout plan. You can do three sets of 10 where you're doing the maximal amount of weight that you can do so safely without endangering your back, ensuring that you're lifting with your legs and that they're all clean repetitions. If you're able to do three times 10 and they're all clean and you're doing it consistently for an entire week, then the following week, feel free to try and add a little bit more weight, maybe five or 10 more pounds and continue to add weight in that manner. At any time that you struggle to complete three times 10 or at any time that you're finding that your back is aching after you're lifting, then you're probably compensating or you're not strong enough for the load that you added from the week before dial it back a bit and continue to work up from there until you're able to lift at least 135 pounds or more over one repetition. At that time, you can start working on your muscular endurance for the sandbag lift component of the force test. Now, if you're also looking to improve on other facets of the force test, check out my rush video on rush fitness, which is linked in the description below. There, I encourage you to do the same thing, but with push up and with lunges. So now you can incorporate your deadlift and your squats into that workout and try to add maybe some upper back or other movements to make it a full body workout that will help you with your rushes and your sandbag lift. If you're ready to start training endurance, but you don't have access to sandbags or the lines on the wall because of where you live or the hours of the gym and your work demands. Well, here's a suitable alternative. First, we can separate the movement into two movements, deadlifts for endurance and then high pulls for endurance. And as we get comfortable with both those movements, we can put them into one. For the deadlift, slight bend in the knees, send your hips back and bend at the waist. Make sure that your lower back isn't curved and that's going to be fixed by tilting your pelvis in even though your bum is being sent back. If your pelvis is tilted out, then you'll see here there's that excess curvature that we want to get rid of. Same thing with your upper body. If you're overarched here, it's going to cause some excessive strain on your upper back. So just roll those shoulders up and stay in that nice, good posture. You can bend your knees if you don't have the flexibility, but keep your bum higher than your knees. Grab your weight and then four repetitions, just deadlift up and then back down. And here, because the weight should be 33% or less, then your maximal lift, you should be able to move relatively quick. Do sets of 15 or 20, or maybe even more, with minimal rest in between. As for the high pull, we're going to start with the weight here 
at the bottom with your arms fully extended. Engage your core, slight bend in the knees, glutes and quads engaged as well. Lift up to your chest, back down, and same thing, repeat here. Now your arms may be weaker than your legs, or at least they probably are. So the weight may be uh, lighter for your high pulls than it is for your deadlift. As you get comfortable with that over three or four weeks, then you can start practicing the sumo deadlift high pull. Grabbing onto your weight, you do both movements in one. Lift up and back down. Because you have a little bit more momentum here from the deadlift, the weight should be almost negligible as you pull it up with your arms. So you can go for a heavier weight. If you want to make the test easier, start training and building up past that 45 pound weight, or you can stay at 45 pounds and that should be sufficient as well. Now that's about it. If you're training also for the rushes, check out the video from last week and try to put the two training programs together. As I already explained, the strength portion of squats and deadlifts can be incorporated with your push-ups and lunges and a couple ancillary movements to make the entire program a whole. When you get to the power phase of the push-up and lunges, that's when you can start working on your muscular endurance for your deadlift and your high pulls as two separate movements. And then, a couple weeks leading into your test, start doing the rushes as intervals and your sandbag lifts as intervals. Don't have access to sandbags? Then do the sumo deadlift high pull like I explained just before this. That's about it for now. Stay tuned for next week where I talk about the intermittent loaded shuttles.